All right, everyone, this is just a QA. and a We might as well do a QA. and a So if anyone's got any questions uh, they want to ask me, and then I'll answer it live. So hello to everyone first. And then I'll read the comments, and you can just uh, just ask me what you like, really. So I've took my headset off because I've had a couple of people say that they can hardly hear me. I need to have a look at these sound settings. So this is my webcam setting now. So let's just get onto the comment section. Anybody wants to ask me any questions or anything about Liverpool, I'll sit here for the next 25, 30 minutes and answer them. So I'll just wait for you to send me the first question and then we'll crack on. Wait for a few more views to join. So this is a QA and a with me if you want to ask me any questions. So again, I'm just waiting for a few more people to join. And then I'll go on to the subjects of whatever anybody asks me. Just waiting on the first question, as always, breaking the ice. So questions about Liverpool's transfer strategy. Any questions about Liverpool's new standard building, the Anfield Road End, how that's looking, I can answer then. Uh... Is there anything about Liverpool? Fire away, ask a question, and I will answer it straight away and read through the comments. And again, like I said, I'm still waiting on the first question. Hope you're all well. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all safe and at home or whatever you're doing. Uh, this is going to be a big transfer win window for ourselves, Liverpool, and uh, I think we need to get it right. I think we need to bring in two or two or three. Uh, so I'm waiting on any questions off supporters and I'll answer them as soon as one comes through. There we go. Sammy Blackadder, thanks for the first question, mate. You think there'd be any new signings? Yes, I do, Sammy. I actually do think there'd be a, 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 at least two. And that goes on the basis of the fact that our squad's already very small in terms of Manchester Cities and Manchester United and stuff like that. Uh, and also, it looks like Irigi, Nat Phillips will be leaving, at least them two. So it goes about saying that we need to bring in more. And I think if the right offer came in for an Oxlade Chamberlain or the right offer came in for, say, for example, a Joe Gomez, Nico Williams has been touted as going. I know that he wants to play regularly to get in the Wales squad uh, for the upcoming World Cup. So it is what it is. I think there will be at least two signings coming in. And I think that basically they will be a midfielder and a centre forward to replace uh, either, you know, obviously either Origi or even Oxlade Chamberlain. Because I do think that Oxlade Chamberlain's form has picked up over the last few months. So for me, it would be like for like. I don't think we need any more defenders. So forget Nat Phillips going. If Nat Phillips goes, then we don't need another defender to replace Nat Phillips. We've already got Matip, we've already got Joe Gomez. Uh, we've already got Van Dijk, Canate, uh, you know, we've already got four centre-halves there anyway. So I think Nat Phillips, and not just that, people keep saying we shouldn't sell Nat Phillips. Nat Phillips deserves to be playing regularly now. He deserves to be playing centre-back every week for somebody. Because who, who wants to be a Premier League footballer and set, not even on the bench? He's not even on the bench. He's not even playing football. So for me... Just start a love for and a thank you for what he did for his last season. Go and play football. Go and play for... And what's he only 25? Put a buyback clause in it like we did Ryan Brewster. Just sell him to a club for 15 million and put a buyback for 25. And if he has an outstanding couple of seasons in the Premier League, bring him back in a couple of years. So that's what I would do. So yes, I do think we will bring in at least two. So that's the answer to the first question. Cheers for that, Sammy. Stuart McMillan. Good name, by the way. <laughs> Do you think the rumours about Bobby to leave in January is too true? Bobby Firmino, for me, is a legend and I love him. I actually do think that uh, that he's got another season or two in him. But then if you think about it like this, Jota's really coming on now, isn't it? So is Jota now ahead of Firmino in terms of the front three? I'd say he is, but I'd say the rotation with them two is brilliant and Firmino's different gravy. So I'd say no. I'd, I'd want Bobby to stay first, but also I'd say that if the right offer came in, and again, it'd have to be an offer that 
that they could not refuse. Now, Bobby seems to me like he loves Liverpool. He loves where he stays. I don't think he will go yet, but I could see Firmino leaving in the next 18 months because of his age. He's never been fast, so he won't rely on that. I mean, look at the Yari Lippmans we used to have, the Teddy Sheringhams. I can see Firmino sort of uh, developing into like the number 10, where he links everything up. And he does that already anyway, but you know what I mean. He's never relied on pace. So I'd go with that for that one. So no, I know there's been rumours that Villa want Firmino, but again, I can't see that one. No. So next next question. Cheers for that, Stuart. Daniel, Daryl Crawford. I always believe 100%, but do you think we can catch City? Daryl, I do. I do believe we can catch City based on the fact that, let's not forget they had an extra couple of games. I got my video wrong yesterday. Like I said, I've had COVID, so I've been a bit all over the place. Uh, and basically... Uh, just going back to my phone just went there. I forgot to turn it off. Sorry. So, yeah, so we can catch City. They had two games in hand. Obviously, we, we drew our game. Uh, we had two games in hand, but we, we drew one against Chelsea. That was a great result against Chelsea. Let's not get that twisted. Chelsea are a fantastic side. And to go there and play the way we did, and it took an absolute world-class strike to, to get them back in it, for me, that was that was a good point. What it is, is you'll do... You'll do this. As long as we capitalise and we win at Anfield and we just go all out at Anfield and win our games at Anfield. I always said this. You want to win the league. This is how it used to be before City. Win your home games and get at least a point on the road against top sides that you're in the top six with. A draw away at a toxic club is a good point. And I think what will happen is we've got the game in hand against Leeds at Anfield. Beat them, right? And then it reduces it to, to eight points. Eight points. Then we play them at the Etihad. If we can beat them at the Etihad, it's five points. Man City have still got to go away to some tricky, tricky places. This is the Premier League. There is no easy games. But we have to invest. What we have to do now is we have to make a statement that we ain't going to let Man City just run away with it. Because they won't wait. If they go and get Erling Haaland in the summer, we might as well just say... Just give him the title every season because that would be, on top of what they've already got, he will score 30, 40 a season for them. We've got that in, in, in our front three, that amount of goals spread over. But what we have to do is remember that the front three will be definitely, definitely coming to the tail end now of their last move after this. A bit like Genie Van Wijn Alden. I'd actually bring Genie and Van Alden home. If he's prepared to take a, a, a loan deal from, because I know he's not happy in PSG, then I'd get Genie back on loan to the end of the season, I would. So, yes, I do believe we, we could catch City. And I, I think that you, yourselves, the supporters, should believe because it ain't over till it's over. And it only takes for them to draw two. Forget about them getting beat. They only have to draw two and we win two. And we've gained four. This And then we beat them. It's down to a single point. So, yes, I do believe we can catch Man City. And I believe, and I still believe, we will win the Champions League. Right, so let's go through the comments again. So cheers for that, Daryl. What two clubs do you think that's in the running for Coutinho? I've just said that a minute ago, Stephen. Uh, thanks for the question. I think it's going to be Villa and Liverpool. It has to be. And they were trying to push them on Sky Sports News saying, do you think it's, who do you think it is? And the guy went, I think you know, I think you know who it is. You know it's Villa. Because Gerard wants him back, because he more or less said it. And it has to be Liverpool, because Liverpool would look this, because Liverpool and Barcelona have a bad relationship with each other. Let's not get that in any other way, shape or form. They don't really like each other. Liverpool will look at this as daylight robbery if they could bring back Coutinho on loan. We've just sold you him for £142 million, and you're loaning him... Loaning him loaning him back to us. I mean, Barcelona, I mean, what a fall from grace they are. I mean, Jesus Christ. Uh, but, you know, I look at it like this. I take Coutinho back and I'll tell you why. The boost it will give the team. The boost it will give the fans. And fans are dead fickle. Right now, there'll be fans typing as we speak saying, don't want him back. Listen, that all changes the minute he curls one in from 25 to 30 yards in the last 10 minutes against Man City or Man United. It changes. Think of the memories we had with him. And don't look at him as a Judas like Sterling and all that. He's never stopped loving the club since he left. Sterling, snake. I'd never have him back. Coutinho was a fan's favourite, right? Sterling wasn't really a fan's favourite. 
Coutinho whips in great free kicks. He's dynamic. Think of the through balls he'll play through to Salah and Mane and Jota. It will be an absolute... He's all we're missing. In the midfield three, he is all we're missing. Everyone's more or less the same. Apart from Thiago, we've got too many of the same in midfield. Fabinho mops up, passes it. Henderson mops up, passes it. You know, Navi Keita mops up, gets injured. So to me, it goes down to the fact is we need something different. And when we've got a free kick now, I don't think we're going to score. Because we haven't got anybody that can swing it into the top corner, like Coutinho, like Suarez, Gerard. So, to me, get him back. Just get him back for cutting in on his right foot and bending it into the top corner. Get him back for his eye of the needle passes. I think the two clubs is Villa and Newcastle. I think it's got to the point now where he's gone. Do I go back to Liverpool? Will I get a good reception? Will I be able to get in the team? Or do I go to my friend Stephen Gerrard, where I know that I will play every single week? That's the conundrum, but he's promised to give us an answer by tomorrow. So, in my opinion, I heard it could be Arsenal and Villa, but in my opinion, I think it's Villa and Liverpool. So, that answers that question. Right, next one. Uh, Cheers for that, Stephen Lamp, for the question. I hope you're right, Carl Reid. Sammy Blackadley, I've already had a question off you, but we do need at least two or three. I've said that. John O'Grady. Supporters know and can see we need uh, to sign this window. Who goes before new signs come in? I just said that a minute ago, John. Thanks for the question. I'd say uh, it'd be Nat Phillips. It will definitely be Nico Williams because it, he was one of the first to come out in this window that he needs football, whether it be on loan or get sold. Uh, it is what it is. So I think it's Nat Phillips, Nico Williams and Divock Origi. They're the three, in my opinion, we will see leave this in this window. So cheers for that, John. Mark Owen, how you doing, Mark? Got to win every game at home and collect a good few wins away. We were in Man City's position before and anyone can be caught. Totally agree with that, Mark. And you know as well as I know, you're a football man as well as I am. You don't win leagues in, in, in Jan- December and January. You win leagues come March, April. We are only, with our game in hand, eight behind them. We will beat Leeds on Boxing Day. Eight behind them. But tell you what, what can happen is that we can go flat. Supporters start going flat. Do you know what FSG should do now? Just to say, we're sorry for the Super League and all that. Go and give the, go and give the fans something to smile about. Go and get Coutinho back, but then go and spend £60 million on this kid from Porto. Go and make the fans happy. Because do you know what would be nice? For us all to sing on the same hymn sheet and for us all to go out there and just be buzzing with everything None of this FSG out bollocks, because you know that'll all happen again. The minute it comes to fucking January, the window finishing, it'll be, oh, FSG are a disgrace, blah, blah, blah. Look, you've got the money. You've just sold a big percentage of your Fenway Sports Group to make an extra 250, well, 400 million, whatever it was, right? Go and piss him by someone big to shut all them FSG out, people, and to make us smile, because we're going through a fucking pandemic again. It's pissing everybody off. We're still paying to go through the turnstiles. We're still paying for shirts. We're still sat in isolation. We're still paying our Sky Sports, our BT Sports, our Amazon. For once in your life, just bloody do a sign-in just to cheer us up rather than it always being about, you know, making sure you make enough money. You know, because I know they're doing it the right way, but for God's sake, for once in your life, just do something for us. So that's my stance on that. Next one. Always never, never got down, definitely. Mickey, Little Kong Pearson, uh, let's have a look at your question. I'd take uh, Coutinho back in a heartbeat. Uh, what would you drop? Who would you drop for him? It doesn't necessarily have to drop anyone for him. We rotate our midfield all the time. So what you could do, say, for example, we've got a tight, one of them teams that are going to come and park the bus at Anfield. I can't really see Henderson, Fabinho and... Uh, T- not T- Henderson, Fabinho and say Oxlade Chamberlain or Henderson, uh, Curtis Jones and Fabinho unlocking that back 10 sort of like low block defence Coutinho could Coutinho could cut in and curl it into the top corner, he could bend a free kick into the top corner, he can unlock defences, so to me I'd play him in a rotation basis on games where you know you need to either unlock a defence, get a goal He's got to understand he won't play every week with us. But that's why I think that at the moment, I'd say it's 70% Villa, 30% Liverpool on the basis of playing for Steven Gerrard and on the basis of playing every week. 
So next question. Uh, cheers for that good question anyway, Mickey. Uh, Coutinho's wages are going to be way high for us. Uh, Ryan, Ryan, I agree, 300 grand a week, but we don't have to pay all of the 300 grand a week. Let's not forget that Alex Sanchez went to Inter Milan and I think Man United were paying 200 grand a week of his wages and Inter were paying 150,000. So that has got nothing to do with it. If it's a loan deal, I'm on Football Manager right now and I've just loaned somebody from Liverpool. I've just loaned uh, Curtis Jones because uh, he says I'm playing 220 and I've loaned him for Kilmarnock. And I'm only paying 30% of his wages. So Liverpool are paying the 70%. So then deals are happening right now as we speak because teams can save 10 million a season just by halving someone's wages. So it just opens up another side. And so that's what it'll be. So I don't think wages has got anything to do with it. He won't come back to Liverpool on 300 grand a week. So I agree with what you're saying, but there'll be a deal in place where he won't be on that much money. And he definitely won't be on that at Villa. So that tells you that it will be a loan deal with an option to buy. Which will never happen. It's Coutinho's wage. Thanks for that. Thinking the same. Defo Tech Coutinho back. Andrew Lewis. Any more questions, anyone? As I'm going through them. And I'll answer them as best as I can. Just going to like all your comments. Thanks for everybody that's given me a question. Anybody else want uh, to ask me a question and I'll uh, and I'll get straight back to you as quick, quick as I can. I'll just have a drink, drink while I'm waiting. Getting better now with the COVID. So I'll hopefully be back on... Back on the straight, straight and narrow soon. Any more questions? Well, one thing I will say though is, hang on, there's two more. Sorry, I just got sent a minute. No, McAteer, take him back every day of the week. We all loved him once, and I think he would get back to that form if we resign him. Totally agree. He'll slot in, he'll do exactly what we know he can do. He knows the players. This is what I'm saying. We could go out now and spend £60 million, like we did £52 million on Navigator, and he could come in. It would take him six months to know our system. It would take him six months to know the way we're playing and what Klopp wants of him. It won't take uh, it won't take Coutinho six flipping minutes. He knows the way Liverpool play. He knows the system. He knows what Klopp wants, and he knows what he can do. He knows the ground. He knows the pitch. He knows the atmosphere. He knows everything. It is a no-brainer. For me, you could get one of the best central attacking midfielders on the planet, which is why he went for 142 million, set-piece specialist, eye of the needle passer, on a loan. You'd be mental to not take it. Absolutely fucking mental. And if Liverpool don't take it, there's more than what we get told behind the scenes of what he has obviously done with Klopp to piss him off as much. Because to me, we should have took him back in the last window, in the window before that, the minute these noises came out. So that's that one, Niall. Thanks for that. Paul Hicken, we can still do it. I really think we can. Totally agree. I still think we'll win the league. I've not lost belief. Why would I lose belief? I've been to Anfield, uh, you know, when we're, you know, 3-1 uh, down to Dortmund and we've come back and won it. I've watched Istanbul. I watched the Barcelona game when we were 3-0 down. That's a game of football to try. That's one match to try and recover uh, the chance of winning. So we have 19 more. 19 more games left or 18 or 19 games left so there is a shitload of points to still play for manchester city have now got 14 positive covid tests today right that's the first time they've had a proper outbreak and i called for it yesterday saying that they were probably paying off the covid testing i take that back now they clearly ain't what will they do if they have to go and play their next couple right without kevin de bruyne without Mares without uh, you know flipping uh, what's his Rodri and uh, and the guy in the midfield Gungadin and stuff like that. They haven't lost a Van Dijk. They haven't lost a Mo Salah, a Sadio Mane, a Matip, a Henderson. That the managers actually got positive today. Pep Guardiola. So it unsettles you. They've not been unsettled. They've gone on this nice steady run where they haven't had any backdrops and any shit going on. It's, it, this COVID situation is a game changer. One week you might win four in a row with your best team and then the next week you might lose lose one and draw one because your spine of your team's gone. Alisson, the goalie, Edison's not had COVID once, has he? This is my point. They're not top of the league because they're a better team than us. They're top of the league because they had a nice clean run of no injuries and no COVID tests. We have lost, even for the, this is why I'm saying Chelsea was a great result. To go into that game with an Irish, the Irish goalkeeper, Cameron Keller, who was outstanding, to go into that game 
with the spot, a lot of your team first team starters missing and still come away with a point shows what you know you know and the manager not even on the touchline clock one even there so to me it has to be and for those that packed out in pep as the next clop the successor no nah, not for me in that game i don't know why he took off a striker to bring on oxlade chamberlain up front i mean what was all that about that's another debate so to me it looks like i'm never going to quit until we are 20 points behind and it is impossible I am not going to quit. I think we can still catch Man City and I believe we can still do the double this season. And I'm glad that the game was postponed against Arsenal because they didn't want us to put the kids out and throw that competition. I want us to go to Wembley. I want us to win another trophy. I don't want another season like last year where we didn't win anything. Liverpool are here to win trophies. Whether it's the League Cup, the FA Cup, the Champions League, the UEFA Cup, the Premier League, we go go out to win it. So let's hope now. And everyone's saying, oh, the, the, the first leg's now going to be here and the second leg. I don't care whether the first leg's at Anfield or the second leg's at Anfield. We can do a job on Arsenal over two legs and get to Wembley. And that is what Liverpool is all about. Wembley. Next one. How is the development getting on at Anfield? If I can ever get tickets there, I'm looking scandalous money over. It's looking amazing. I was down there. I'm, on, I'm in self-isolation at the moment with regards to my... Uh, COVID, uh, COVID tests, which is doing me because I'm missing, I'm still doing my kit manager job, but I'm missing uh, the games, which is really frustrating me, so it's not not great. <coughs> but I, I walked past it, when did I go? My, uncle, my uncle was down from Scotland for Christmas, I walked past it a few days ago, like three, four days ago, and all the bot, they've actually got the bottom tier literally built now, as in the framework has all come down for the first section of it leading out of the stand. But you can walk underneath it. You can actually go for a walk around Anfield and that, and you walk underneath. They've even concreted the first level of the flooring. So you, you're actually walking underneath the first part of the tier for the new Anfield road end. Honestly, I cannot believe how much they've done already. And all the, the uh, foundations are all placed out for it to extend back. So Anfield... The Anfield Road end looks absolutely phenomenal. And as soon as I get out of isolation, I'm going straight down there to do a video and we and I will bring brilliant footage for you. I'm going to get a selfie stick tomorrow and I'm going to literally show you all around it. Fingers crossed I can get off this bloody isolation soon because I promise you this, I'm going to bring you the best videos of us chasing Man City, of us out there on Champions League nights and of inside Anfield because... That's what I do, and that's what I do best. I can have my spells on and off the group, but listen, I've got a life, and sometimes I'm, you know, I can push myself a little bit too much. But I promise you, I'll bring you the best of the best with regards to the development and everything that goes on around this this area of Anfield. Next one. Here's definitely what we are missing. Tina, the deals, Marco, ends the deals used to be one third paid by one club, the other two thirds by the club that own the player, i.e. Barcelona. Our own Coutinho contract would cost about 90k a week. It's a no-brainer. Exactly exactly what I meant, Mark, and I know this is what I mean. We know our football, you know what I'm talking about when I say that. It's something I mean ninety grand a week sounds like, you know, you're taking ninety grand a week off a wage bill. That's one eighty times two. That's you know, three hundred uh, so one eighty times two, three hundred and what eighty grand a month times twelve He's saving like 10, 12, 14, 15 million for that period. And that's a lot of money. So, yeah, so that's the no-brainer. I think he would play well with with Thiago. I think Thiago and him would be similar. In fact, no, no, I haven't said that. Good point, Paul. When Bayern Munich won the European Cup, they linked up quite well, Thiago and Coutinho. It's a good shout. Mauro McCarthy. Hope he comes back. Here's what we need to get him. He's fit into our style. Perfect. Totally agree. John O'Grady, what's the situation with player quote, quotas? Have we to sell foreign or English or can we bring in without upsetting the quota? I think uh, because we sold Gruwich, we've got one available to come in as a foreigner. I know that. And mind you, Canate come in, didn't it? Actually, Canate was in. I think it's like for like. So if Origi goes out, we can bring in a foreign player. If Nat Phillips goes out, we can bring in a British player. I mean, it's like for like. I mean, the quotas, the quotas sound, I think. What's the situation with player quotas? Yeah, I just read that one. No, I'm here. Just wondering if there's any news on Harvey Elliott's return. Obviously, he'd be eased back in, but would love to see him back ASAP. It'd be like a new signing in itself. Do you know what, mate? I was saying this the other day. He'd be in, he'd be in the England team now. I reckon we would be talking about player one of the play. He would have creamed young player of the season in the Premier League. Creamed it. 
Klopp seen something in him to start him. I mean, I remember my man going, what? He's starting Harvey Elliott. This lad was... I remember listening to Stuart Downing, who was at Blackburn last season on Sky Sports, and he said he has never seen a player like him in his whole career. And you've got to remember, he's played with Luis Suarez, he's played with Coutinho. He said, for his age, he was our go-to player. So at Blackburn, the, the team was told to give the ball to Harvey Elliott. He was 17 when he was at Blackburn, playing in the Championship, played 42 games for them, and had the most assists in that division. I'm telling you now, he is the best signing of the season in terms of steel, in terms of value. Unbelievable. So, yeah, Harvey Elliott, I know he's back in training, and I know that basically uh, he's on the, the road to recovery. Now, I'm going to go to Anfield and watch some of the 23 games, uh, and hopefully he'll be back, and I'll give you all a first-hand sort of uh, scout report of how he's doing. So you'll get all that from this group as well. This group's going to another level now because I'm going to put more time into my group uh, <clears throat> because I want to push this channel now. I was close to giving up at Christmas because <clears throat> I overdone it, overdone it. But this is my baby, D2B TV. Me and Craig Farragher put a lot into it and we've got some great plans and we've decided now to put that at the top along with AFC Liverpool and that's going to be my life now. So I promise to bring you everything I can, Liverpool, and get this group. Can, you, can everyone please share this group for me, please? And can you also join my YouTube channel? It's free. Just go onto YouTube, put in D2B TV and subscribe for free. So that'd be great if you could do that. Uh, just wondering if there's any news. That that's the one of the thread. Agree with you, mate, about Genie. Definitely would bring him back. Now, if, yeah, for an Alden, when Alden wants to come back on loan, another no-brainer. Would you be happy if we just brought in two on two this season, two in this window, both loans, Wijnaldum and Coutinho? Answer that question in the video. Because I would. So any more questions before I close it? It's been a nice little q and I'll do these every sort of other day. And also I'm going to be doing uh, I'm going to be doing some more sort of like, I might even bring back, uh, you know, prediction videos and that. Because they were really good when we did them. And uh, as soon as this COVID situation ends and that, I might start doing some prizes again for uh, for score predictions and stuff like that. But we'll bring, up, we'll bring it all in if possible. So any more? No, that's it. Well, thanks everyone, and I'll do another Q&A soon. You'll never walk alone.